Welcome to the reharmonization game where the chords are made up and the melody doesn't matter. Well, not exactly. But anyway, uh, I'm going to show you some really cool ways of reharmonizing. And so let's look at this first document and you, and you look at these chords and the melody and you're thinking, what am I looking at? Is this Greek? Um, I'm going to break it down for you. We're going to talk about some different options. And first of all, let's just look at the top line. You see an F, 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 F. It's F the whole time. So it's a single note melody that's being played across the whole uh, three bars there. And then the left hand, the left hand's going down chromatically. So again, the right hand's staying the same. The left hand's going down chromatically. So the point of this exercise is to show you that you can take a single note, like F, and you can move down chromatically, and by moving down chromatically, you can change the chord quality so that the F, it could be the root, for example. It could be the flat nine if, as you're going down. It could be the ninth. It could be the sharp nine. So I'm, I'm creating different chord extensions just based on the one note. This one note becomes different parts of the chord. So for the first chord, I chose an F, 6-9 chord. But the thing is, what's so cool about this is that you could do more than one chord for this. You could do F6. You could make this an F minor chord if you wanted to. You could make this a, a D flat over F. You could make it a G7 over F. You could make it a G flat over F, G flat major 7. There's so many different uh, chords you could use, and so it's really a kind of a fun, the reason we call this a game is because it does feel kind of like a game, and that you try to challenge yourself, and you say, okay, well, this is F major. Well, what if I made it F minor? Well, that's interesting. What if I make it an inversion? Oh, that's like D flat over F. Or that G I showed you. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's like a 2 over 1, or G flat major over F. So you start to develop all these colors, and so for each of these examples I'm showing you, you can choose a multiple uh, array of chords. I just happen to be choosing these particular voicings and chords um, as a demonstration. The point of this is to really explore all the harmonic possibilities that there are. And there are thousands of possibilities, but it's really up to you just to use your ear and to play around with different bass notes, try different chords in the right hand, and you'll, it'll really open up your harmonic palette. So I'm going to continue now and get on to this next chord after we did this F6-9. For the next example, for the um, moving down a half step, I have E on the outside and F on top. And so I decided, well, this could be a flat 9 in my right hand. And if that were the case, let's make, the, let's make this a dominant chord. So I went E7, and I put the 3rd here, and put a 13th in there. That sounds kind of interesting, right? So we went from F6 to E13 flat 9. Now when we move down to E flat, well, that could also be a 9 of E flat, right? So I decided, well, let's make that a dominant chord as well. So my left hand played E flat, D flat, root 7, and I put in the 3rd, the 13th, and the 9. Really nice sound, right? Now we're moving down chromatically again, and so we have a D on the outside, and we have an F up here, and say, well, let's see. This could be a D minor chord, it could be a B flat chord, there's a lot of different things it could be, but I chose to make this a dominant chord and to make this F a sharp nine. So here's the root seven, here's the third, and I put in a sharp five or a flat thirteenth as well, so I have this sound. So, so far we've had um, a major six and we've had dominant chords. These are all dominant chords here, right? So that's kind of interesting in that sometimes you'll have these like parallel dominants and it just happens to work out that way. Great. Well, once we get to this D flat and uh, there's an F on top, sure, I could have made that another dominant chord, but I wanted to change the color a little bit. And I thought, well, I could also make that a major seven. So that's what I chose to do here is to make this a D flat major seven. Here's the root. Here's the fifth. Here's the major seventh. And I always like to add in the nine when I have a major seven for added color. So I have that pretty D flat major nine. And now again, going down chromatically, if I'm going to C, well now I have F, so the F is the 11th, 
or the sus, right? So, you know, you could do you could do like a C9 sus or, you know, D flat over C. There's a lot of possibilities, but I chose to make this a minor 11 chord. So, C minor, here's the 7th, here's the 9, and here's the 11th. Beautiful, right? So we went from a D flat major 9 to a C minor 11. I love that sound. And then again, going down chromatically from C, and I have F on top. Well, what could that be? Well, that's a sharp 11, isn't it, of B. So sharp 11, I decided that maybe um, I could either make that dominant, like a dominant sharp 11, or I could make it a uh, major 7. I, I chose to make it a major 7 with a sharp 11. So in my left hand, I have root 5, major 7 in my right hand, the 3rd, and the sharp 11. Beautiful kind of a darker quality chord. Moving down another half step to B flat. Again, F would be the fifth of B flat, right? So there's a lot of choices. I could have I could have made it major. I could have made it, uh, you know, like that kind of C over B flat kind of thing. But I chose to make it minor. Make it a B flat minor. So I went root 11, 7, 3, Five. This is also what they call the so what chord because it's based on the song so what. And it has fourths with a major third on top. So what's also nice is that you sometimes start to develop voicings that maybe you hadn't thought about before because you're just having fun. You're experimenting. Trying to experiment with different sounds. Now we go down a half step. Again, F on the outside and it's an A in my left hand. Well, what is that interval? That's a minor six. So let's see, what could I do with the minor six? Ooh, what if I made it a sharp five? That's kind of cool. And make it a dominant chord again. So my left hand's playing the root and the three. My right hand's playing seven, sharp nine, sharp five. Ooh, that's a cool sound. Now I go down a half step again to A flat. F is on top. Well, that's the 13th, isn't it? But it could also be just a regular six chord. So I decided to make it an A flat six with also a major seven. So we have root five, here's the major seven, there's the third, and there's the sixth. It also kind of creates this sort of chordal voicing in the right hand, it's all fourths, right? Really pretty. Again, going down another half step, G is on the bottom, F is on top, that's the seventh, isn't it? I could have made it minor, I could have made it minor seven flat five, um, but I. I don't know, I was looking for a different color, so I decided just to make it dominant again. So we have root 5, 9, major, 3rd, and minor 7. So G9. And then lastly, we're going down to G flat. And so what is F in relation to G flat? That's a major 7. So it naturally kind of feels like you'd make it a major 7 uh, chord. So my left hand's playing the root 3rd. I added the 6 and the 9 here. Here's the five, and there's the major seven. Again, this is kind of that so what chord I was talking about before. So let me play them all together because it's kind of interesting how it all sort of flows together. One thing you can do too, if it's too daunting to go through hands uh, together is to start with just the right hand and just see what that sounds like. Kind of cool by itself, right? But it sort of takes you out of context because you're not hearing the bass. But it's it's pretty nonetheless. Then you try the left hand by itself. So in the left hand, you see a lot of like either intervals of like a sixth or a seventh or a fifth. Sometimes root three five. But you know, the cool thing about this game is you don't even have to have any other notes in your left hand besides the root if you don't want to. You could just play triads above in the right hand. Um, I just liked kind of a denser voicing, which is why I added more notes in the left hand. But that's what's fun about this game is the sky's the limit, really, in terms of voicings and how you can put it together. Um, now let's put the hands together. 
slowly and uh, so you can really hear how these chords move. Again, the left hand is just moving down chromatically. And when you repeat, it goes right back to F. So it, it, you can repeat this exercise over and over again because it keeps going back to F. So it goes like this. One, two, ready, play. It's really pretty, isn't it? And it's it very much sounds like some of the artists you might be listening to, like Jacob Collier, for example, who does a lot of these uh, kind of reharmonizations where he takes a melody and kind of makes it makes it sound kind of outside. And that's really by experimenting with again focusing on the melody and having the chords move around and picking these different uh, chord choices that really add to me. It adds a lot of color, which makes music really interesting to listen to. So before we take this and, and use it in a song, I'd like to mention that we just happen to choose descending chromatic, but you could go chromatically the other way too. You could do the same exercise going the other way, making any chord work. One thing I like to do too is sometimes take a single note, but in my left hand, go around the circle of fifths. So for example, go up a fourth, down a fifth, really a fun one too. I mean you can really take take any any note and it doesn't even have to start on F. We just happen to be starting on F. You could start on any any chord in the left hand too. It doesn't have to start on the root. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay great so we you know the the I think the best thing to do when you're when you're reharmonizing something is to take a simple melody because simple melodies really kind of open up the harmonic possibilities. If the melody is too intricate and there's too many notes it can get maybe a little bit too dense. So Taking a lullaby, for example, like Twinkle Twinkle or Happy Birthday or anything that's kind of a simple melody, you can take and reharmonize. I know, you know, Danny Boy is another great one to do. So this one, um, I decided that I wanted to end on the one chord. I just felt like, yeah, it'd be nice to end on F, right? And so, but I wanted to do a, a dis descending uh, chromatic movement. So if I started on F, and I went down chromatically. Would that work? Let me see. Ah, no, I would get to E. Okay, well, I need to end on F. So what does that mean then? I need to then start a half step higher in order for, for me to get down to F in terms of how many notes there are to fit with the left hand chromatic movement. So it, now it would look like this. That's, that works out, right? So that's one way to figure it out is I said, okay, well, I know I want to end on the root and then you kind of count backwards to figure out with the, with the amount of notes in the melody, would that work out? So in this case, I have to start on G flat. And so again, even though um, I just happen to choose this chord for G flat, because this is the major seven, right? You could have chose any number of chords. You could have gone B flat over G flat or make this like a D flat over G flat. Um, or make it an F over G flat. There's a lot of possibilities. I just happen to choose this one because I like the sound of this G flat major with a sharp 11, and here's the major seven. So again, start it off like that, and then, you know what, sometimes you have to just have to play an actual major chord of the key that you're in. So I just went to simple F major there. And then for the next one, again, I'm going down chromatically. The melody note is the sharp five or the flat 13. So again, I could have done, done some other chords, you know. Um, I chose, end up choosing E7 and making this the sharp five or flat 13. So left hand's playing root three, seven. My right hand's playing sharp nine, flat 13. And then uh, the next one, if I'm moving down chromatically, you have an E flat in the left hand, 
the C is the 13th or the 6th, right? So again, because we came from this dominant chord in the previous one, I thought, well, why don't we just keep it dominant? And we have this chord. So it's an E flat 7 with a 9, a sharp 11, and a 13, which, by the way, looks like an F major triad over E flat. Kind of a cool sound. Then we go to the next one. Now, this is interesting because we, we somehow ended up with the same note in the right and left hand, which sometimes happens, which is kind of a nice thing. Again, there's a lot of possibilities I could have chosen for this. I could have made it D minor. I could have made it C over D. I could have made it, you know, a lot of possibilities. I chose, again, to kind of stick with the dominant vibe and decided to do root three, seven, sharp nine. Here's the sharp five or flat 13, and there's the root. And then again, we're going down a half step. Now that sounds pretty dissonant, doesn't it? Because it's a half step away. But I tend to think of that as the flat nine. So for that, again, flat nine would be a dominant. So we have root seven, three, I put in the 13th here, and then we have a D, which is the flat nine. Also looks like a B flat major triad over D flat. And continuing with the dominant, although this one's a little different on the C, but again, kind of interesting. We're going from here to here. Again, we've ended up on the same note miraculously. So we have, um, again, I could have just gone C7 or A flat over C, but I decided to make it a C9 with a sus or suspended note. Again, just to add some different color. Could have done a lot of things. I just chose this one. Uh, let, so let me just play the first two measures so you can hear how that sounds, because I know I've gone through a lot of chords here. Here we go. So this is G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, 9 sus. Now I'm, I've, I've arrived at the next one, which is a C flat or a B, however you want to think of it. I'm calling it a C flat. And there's a B flat on top, which looks like a major 7. So I decided I could have done um, some other chords, uh, I decided to make it a C flat major seven. So here's the root five, major third, sharp 11, and major seven. Kind of a pretty sound there. Now we're moving down to the next note, ah, where we have the same note, B flat. Again, I could have gone B flat minor, could have gone E flat over uh, minor over B flat. I chose to make it just a regular B flat 13. So root seven, three 13 roots. And then the A7 is next, and it happens to be also A in the left hand. So I decided to make it dominant, so root 7, 3, sharp 5, root. And then going down to the A flat, kind of dissonant, again, it's that minor second. I think of it as a flat 9, so I played root 7, 3, 13, flat 9. Also looks like an F major triad. I'm just kind of paralleling the, the dominant sevenths going down here. So G, G13, GF, root seven, three, 13 root. And one more dominant chord as well on the G flat. Because again, I kind of think of this as a flat nine, so I made this dominant, root seven, three, 13, flat nine. And ending dominant as well. So we have root seven, three, 13 root. So in this particular example, there's a lot of dominant chords in here. I think, um, in fact, I don't think there's even one minor chord in this example, is there? It's all either a major seven or dominant. So, you know, sometimes you just feel like doing it one way and that's totally cool. So um, let's play it together. And uh, before we do that though, let's try hands separately. Again, I think it's nice to kind of look at the hands, um, especially for, to be able to play it technically. So let's start with the right hand only first. So we have this. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That actually sounds pretty good, right? Even just by itself, it sort of makes sense. Then you look at the left hand, and let's try that alone. So we go like this three, four, one, two, dominant chords going down, root and seven. Here's a root and five, root seven, root seven, all root sevens. That's kind of cool. So the, so the left hand's doing a lot of root seven. Let's try it together. Two, three, and.
right, so, you know, I, again, I decided to go down chromatically. I could have gone up and done a similar kind of a thing. I could have gone around the circle of fifths if I wanted to. So many different things you can do and it, each one has its own flavor and color doesn't it it's really fun so that's what i mean by uh having a game make it a game make it fun it's really it, it's it looks intimidating but it's really really fun and you i think you really develop your ear and get a lot of colors that maybe you wouldn't have thought about because you're just kind of forcing yourself to oh let me just move down chromatically and make it work and it's pretty cool the things you can come up with maybe you can even come up with some of your own unique voicings as well so I just want to thank you so much for joining me on this reharm game. I um, would love to hear your comments on some different things that you're working on and if these techniques are working for you. So have fun and enjoy. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the lesson, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.